Hello and welcome to It's Your Business with Mario Taniguzzi on Megapix Media. Joining me today is Vince Guzzo, who is CEO and President of Cinemas Guzzo in Quebec, also a well-known Canadian entrepreneur and a dragon on Dragon's Den TV series. Thanks for joining us today, Vince. Thank you, Mario. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start, Vince, by uh, just uh, giving me your take on how governments, uh, from an entrepreneur's perspective, how governments have uh, uh, handled and uh, taken care of this COVID pandemic uh, in the last uh, nine, ten months. You know, I think uh, I think we're we're always on the reaction mode. I, I I don't think the governments have actually. You know, I always like to say. The most annoying thing as an entrepreneur is when your banker or your investors tell you, can you give me a forecast? Uh, and we always sit there and want to be so precise. And then we're always reminded that it's our best guess estimate of the future, right? Uh, yeah. You would expect that a government would have a plan and that everybody's pretty clear that all plans are made and, and are flexible because they, you know, nobody can be held to a plan in a pandemic, but at least have a plan. Uh, my biggest problem is that we mentioned in April that we should have closed uh, uh, travel from affected countries that were, in all intents and purposes, bringing a potential virus carriers to Canada. And, and yeah. we were told no. Uh, now that's what they're doing. I'm just hoping that means un unlocking down everybody, unconfining people. Because if you're going you know, to uh, impose another lockdown, as was done in Quebec at least, for the Christmas holidays, and now you're gonna do that for spring break, at the very least, to get people to follow you, you gotta give them something, right? So give them, give them movie theaters, give them restaurants, give them entertainment in their own uh, cities without them having to go out of the country to go get that. The yeah. other problem is I think there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, I think the government doesn't want to appear um, uh, as if, they're not really clear what they're doing. You know, they almost want a, a, a secrecy to show confidence in, you know, to give confidence to people because they know what they're doing. I think that one of the most honest politicians was Doug Ford when he said, look, guys, it's the pandemic, okay? We're, we're on a, 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 a go, go as we react basis. We're not even sure what to do, what not to do, et cetera. Yeah. I don't think many politicians have been that honest, at least not the premier of Quebec hasn't. And I think that's bothersome because that will open up the door to what I would call the cuckoos of this world who believe in conspiracy theories all over the place. And now we're wasting a lot of time and now we're creating divisionness amongst uh, uh, the people when in reality we should all be united yeah. and, and agree that it's a complicated situation, but give us the, the goods as they are and, and we will you know, support you. You know, as, um, uh, as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, uh, how do you s survive in these economic and these challenging economic times? What's your advice for, for people? Well, you know, the, I think more than survive, I mean, there's very little you can do in the middle of the pandemic uh, if you hadn't planned for, you know, if you, if you didn't have a contingency plan for a turnaround in the economy or a turnaround. You, know, you have to look at this as a huge economic downturn, okay? Don't look at it as a pandemic because... I don't think anybody uh, has ever sat there and said, okay, I'm going to have a 2% money put aside for a pandemic, right? I mean, the last pandemic was before I was born, real pandemic, let's say, before I was born 51 years ago. So uh, I'm not convinced. But what you do have to plan for is a turnaround. The other thing that you know, we've been very lucky is that we were not at all over leveraged or, or anything going into this, which allowed us to turn around and get the required help you know, for cash flow purposes. Uh, uh, but I think this is the key where some industries can pivot and now's the time to do it. In other words, you got to pivot right away. The minute somebody announces a pandemic or a huge economic downturn, you never know how long that's going to last. So you start pivoting right away. And, and I believe Manjeet, you know, who's with me on Dragon's Den has done a great job with her brother pivoting into the hand sanitizer stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that most entrepreneurs should take these, should have taken these last 10 months to take all of those projects that were behind, you know, in the back of their minds and sort of, you know, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that, to have activated them, right? So all of the retail food part of our business has now become in the forefront 
of our operations, of my everyday life. My movie theater business, apart from the online, has, has gone from 75% of my time to less than 5% of my time, right? Except for the bleed, which every day bothers me when I look at it. But it's a question of adapting and more getting ready for when we do come out of it and making sure that you double up and triple up on your returns once things reopen. Yeah. Um, Vince, what is your take on, uh, on the future of uh, small business in Canada? What can, you know, what do you see uh, as we go forward, uh, you know, uh, coming out of this pandemic? So I think, look, I think we're gonna, um, we're gonna need help. There's a lot of small businesses that will fold. And, and while many people don't realize you know, I, I, I was at the grocery store uh, two weekends ago and somebody was mentioning my name and saying, well, I don't really care how much money he loses. You know, he's got the money. He can afford it. Right. And I just walked by them and I turned around and I said, do you know him? And, you know, with the mask on, he didn't even realize it was me. He says, well, I, I, yeah, I know what he looks like. OK, so let me tell you like this. Forget how much money I lose. Forget how much money the small business owner loses. Just remember that a small business owner employs people. If he loses money and if he disappears, so do those jobs. And if those jobs disappear, that means that now the government is subsidizing those jobs. And the truth of the matter is that small business owners pay their income taxes here in Canada. They don't offshore to Ireland. They don't offshore to Barbados. They're all here. And they're the, the, the innovators of, you know, how many times have you heard big corporations come along and sweep up these small entrepreneurs with a great idea and take a hundred million dollar idea and make it a billion dollar idea. But if it wasn't for that small business who had the guts and had the innovation to do it, you wouldn't have had that idea. You would have had a, 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 a pretty boring, uh, uh, stagnant uh, way of, uh, of doing business. So I think small business is important. Uh, I think that small business minded operation is important because it, it allows an entry point, right? You also have to remember there's a lot of people that use small business to be their entry point into successful businesses, right? Yeah. And so I think Canada will have to step up. I think provinces will have to step up. I mean, as much as we like to give money to SNC-Lavalin and Bombardier and all of those people or whoever to come here, I think we need to realize that collectively, small, small and medium-sized Canadian companies represent an even bigger and more significant part of our economy. So when you look at, into the future, uh, Vince, as an investor yourself, uh, what are some of the key industries you think are, are, uh, are going to be more attractive, I guess, for investors going forward? Now, you know, I, I'm going to sound crazier than, than I did before this pandemic when I say this, but I really think the entertainment space, I believe movie theaters, I believe travel, once travel comes back, I think travel will be huge. I think people, you won't be able to keep people at home. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think restaurants will be big again. I think shopping in, uh, uh, in malls with the experience of shopping, I think people will go back. I really think online will become a convenience and only almost a service, uh, um, you know, almost for like, okay, I don't feel like getting up. And, and ordering, you know, uh, going to a, a Radio Shack and buying this little piece. I'll just order it on Amazon or online. But I think everything else, every excuse you will have and every reason you may have to get up and leave your house, you will. I think people will, will be uh, 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 busy, you know, busy bodies outside of the home um, more now than ever. It's 10 months, right? This is like, for a lot of people, this is a jail sentence. I mean, uh, 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 in fact, you know, uh, there's somebody, somebody that I know, not that I'm necessarily proud of knowing him, but there's somebody that I know that had uh, accumulated way too many parking tickets and was given the choice of paying or going to jail. He goes, Christ, now I know what I would have suffered if I would have gone to jail. This is what it is, right? I'm confined. I can't move. I, I, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. it, it, so I think ski slopes will come back. Golf will be a big thing as well. So I think anything to do with out of home uh, experiencing, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll, and, and by the way, for those who do think I'm crazy, go look at your, your economic history books and you will notice that after every great crisis, every great pandemic, this is exactly what has happened. 
after the you know the big wars this is what happened you had a boom in the in the entertainment space or in the and i i think we're all just about said and done with the online of watching movies and everything like i i teased uh, michael drake yesterday i saw his movie uh uh, uh, uh little things uh, with denzel washington and i and, and i sent him an sms and i said to him i says you do realize i just paid 24.99 for your movie which is more than i've ever paid for a movie considering i don't pay to watch movies yeah. you know and we all laughed and everything but the fact of the matter is that there is very little left to watch after 10 months and there's, there's content can't be replaced quickly enough and so it's going to be about going out socializing without having to touch each other without having necessarily exchange each other's you know uh, uh names so so i think we'll go into a a, a, a sort of a 20s uh, uh um a frenzy you know it'll be a great gatsby kind of era okay super one last question for you vince um the importance of uh of philanthropy and uh, giving back to the community can you talk a little bit about that uh especially now in these times uh you know why is it important for entrepreneurs small businesses businesses in general to uh to not uh i guess uh, throw that all aside uh just because we're in a pandemic well I, you know look uh, uh, you know the old the, the old adage is you know charity starts at home right and and so uh, uh, local, uh, uh, you know, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, that's my local, right? So now what's important about, about you know, uh, uh, philanthropy is you have to remember that philanthropy isn't only about giving money. Sometimes it is about sending a message. It is about helping people, right? So when we gave money, for example, to hospitals for imaging departments, there was a reason we did that. It's because we felt the governments were not taking care of the imaging departments. And when we help an imaging department, what we allow is diagnostics to come out quicker and treatment to come out quicker. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm the government's biggest pain in the butt because now we have twice as many, uh, um, twice as many uh, interventions and twice as many treatments that can get done, right? So when you, when you contribute, when you do philanthropy, you're not only feeling good, you're actually returning sometimes on an immediate basis right? And sometimes on a long to middle term basis. I think sometimes it's a message you're sending to your community, to your government. And I would tell you that it's a, um, it's a sense of family, right? I mean, if, if we are Montrealers, Quebecers, and Canadians, we have, to, we have to have each other's backs. As much as regional divisions could occur, you know, I, I still consider myself an honorary Albertan because, you know, I'm a big oil guy and I still believe that, you know, pipelines should be there to help our country and so forth. So we have to help as much as we can. And it's in times of need that you've got to help people. I always tell, you know, banks when I, when I speak to them, I say, guys, you know, it's nice to lend me money when I don't need it. I about you try lending me money when we do need it, right? Because that's when I, I think it has the most impact. And that's where I think we're at. I think we all have to uh, help, you know, one another. And when I started, you know, Love Food to Go, that's what it was, right? It was about helping local uh, uh, producers lo helping local factories get their products online across the country and not about another Amazon or not about another Netflix kind of a of approach to things. Okay, super. Thanks for joining us today, Vince. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for having me as usual. Okay, super. That was Vince Guzzo, who is CEO and president of Cinemas Guzzo, a well-known entrepreneur in Canada, and a dragon on Dragon's Den television series. This has been It's Your Business with Mario Tonaguzzi on Megapix Media. Thanks for joining us today.